We're working on the next season of the Meaningful Content Mixer coming in January 2021. In the meantime, we thought it would be fun to look back at inspiration from season one. We like to ask each of our guests and sometimes ourselves where people like to find inspiration. Let's take a look back and get inspired. I get inspiration by seeing what works from other people, right? Like you've been on a call, a group team call where someone's pitching their project and it just like everybody was bought in, right? Everyone got it. And I was like, what worked about that? What was, what was that, that special moment where people were like, I mean, right? Where was that tipping point? So find your tipping points. So find it in the little things, what works. So it's a hard thing to answer, right? Because I think you always have to keep your eyes open for, for everything that is interesting. Be interested in the world. But uh, I think my inspiration comes from, a, it's a lot more simply, uh, a lot more, a lot more simple um, to get at. Most of my ideas, and I tell this to my students, come from my conversations with people around me. If they don't pop up out of anywhere. I mean, it's not some lone genius sitting in a room and an idea comes out. It's me playing video games and being in party chat and we're just, you know, we're playing a game and we start discussing determinism and we start discussing politics. And you always have to have your eye out for that. All of those conversations are important that we have with people. So my inspiration always comes from the friends around me, the conversations I'm having with students. We have to be talking to each other and you'd be surprised how many ideas start to percolate in your head whenever you're actually connecting with other human beings. I find it in nature. I really, I, I find a lot of inspiration in nature. Um, but I draw conclusions a lot outside of the typical realm. So for me, I guess nature is the biggest inspiration in people. Just, I'm fascinated with people. I, I'm curious. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what else to say. You know, I like to, I like to know why I like to try things out and see what happens. I, I am an experimenter at heart. I am. I, I like to read a lot of things cause I never know where that idea is going to come from. I like to talk to people because that's how I figure things out. So where do I find my inspiration? Um, the, the one I think about are actually my daughters. Um, and it's simply because they ask questions about the world that they see around them that they're looking to daddy for, for an answer. And I have to break it down for them as simply as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, trying to explain to them when they ask the question, why is the moon not always round? I'll try and explain that to a kid. And that inspiration that I'm talking about there is it makes me think about how do I break down and simplify a problem into something that people walk away from going, oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my inspiration I always get. And, and, I, and great content that out there, you just see that. You see they take a really complicated topic, break it down, and simplify it without making it seem too simple. I love this question. I like. I'm. I, I think I'm a creative at heart. I I like writing creatively, short stories and things like that. So I, I read a lot and find inspiration exploring um, new authors, new genres. Um, you know, recently I've been looking for local authors. I looked at my shelf and realized that there weren't a ton of women authors or people of color. So I've been trying to be better about that and explore um, new titles and new authors. And it's, it's really a rewarding experience. But what I pay attention to is stuff that kind of gets me percolating. Uh, I like abstract stuff. I like risk taking. I like things that haunt me a little bit. Uh, recently, 
speaking of strange places to find inspiration, I, <laughs> I'm on like a alien kick. So the first alien movie is one of my favorites. The first two, in fact, are two of my like favorite films of all time. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what it is about that aesthetic or the storyline. I don't particularly <laughs> like horror or violence. Mm-hmm. It just does. It puts me in a creative space. And all of a sudden I find myself reaching for a notebook. Um, so sure I've been, awesome. I've been watching those films and so I'm looking always looking at you know film aesthetic too for a source of inspiration um and then just getting away from work and living life to the extent we can these days is always inspiring yeah I read a lot of behavioral economics (laughs) (laughs) interesting um and also just like ux things so uh, one of my favorite books it's a little outdated now but i it, i come back to it a lot um is the design of everyday things by don norman and mm. the the coolest thing about it is it it kind of reminds you that like you, you're you're not wrong and you're not crazy whenever things seem like they're like awkwardly designed mm-hmm. um, and so essentially it's like you know like designers don't always get it right and and that's like an important piece of of the process um so kind of like digging into some of those things and then i read a ton of the new yorker i'm, I'm a huge new yorker fan mm-hmm. and i always find things where i'm like oh my gosh let's go change the world <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing let's just put your shoes on let's go <laughs> <laughs> So I think I mentioned her name before. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Kathy Sierra. Um, and she did, uh, she worked in tech uh, years and years ago. She left tech for a little while and then she went back. Uh, when she left tech, she ended up working with horses. Uh, she worked in photography. She did a lot of other things. And even though it wasn't in the tech industry, what she says about those other industries is so fascinating and so relevant. Uh, and so I think one thing that I've really started trying to challenge myself to do is find interesting women that are outside of my area, outside of my world or my little mm-hmm. ecosystem, um, and listen to what they have to say too. Uh, mm-hmm. Because so often the things that they talk about, they're relevant to what I'm doing, just kind of in a different way. Um, mm-hmm. and so, uh, Kathy Sierra has kind of been my bridge into that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always on the lookout for, uh, women, other women that are doing fascinating things that, uh, in other areas other than mine. So that's, that's where I find my inspiration. I really find inspiration in trying to find connections between things that at the surface maybe don't seem connected. I love looking for analogies and comparisons and maybe what seems like disparate disciplines, seeking and highlighting how they really are connected. And another another sort of flavor of that is is really focusing on how we all are more similar than we are different. I think that is true for both, you know, who content creators and consumers were actually like, we all are both of those at different yeah. times. So more similar than different in that way. And, and our goals and what we're all trying to do, I think we're more similar than different. And I, I do get inspired by trying to find those connections and highlight. Mm-hmm. I find inspiration in, in, um, stories about overcoming hardship. So like, um, I was actually listening to another podcast recently where they were talking about Susie Batiz, who's the founder of Poopery. And, um, mm-hmm. which is like, when, when I think of it, I'm like, oh, that's a funny brand. Um, you know, we all know that brand and I think she's got, you know, a net worth over 200 million. Like but it. when you look at her story, you know, she was bankrupt twice and, you know, had a a scary, you know, um, story about attempting to commit suicide and and making Mm -hmm. it through that. And she overcame so much. And then from that created poopery. (laughs) I find inspiration in those types of stories. It's just like anything is possible. You can get through anything. So, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's where I find my inspiration. We hope you got some ideas for how to seek inspiration. If you're inspired to leave a review or share this podcast with others, we'd appreciate it. Subscribe wherever you're tuning in so you don't miss the next episodes.